is the uh, North West uh, Collective, Linda Goodrick. Welcome. Um, this is Hamish Flynn from Papua New Year's Development as well, who's a member of the North West Collective. So anyway, our submission was around the dreaded funding, community funding. Um, we're looking at the whole city wide, not just our organisations, but we represent eight of the North West um, community groups. So it's about the no increases in community funding. You know, we can't keep doing what we're doing with just getting that set amount or less each year. Um, we're also talking to other funders. We've already talked to Rata. It, it has to go everywhere. Um, our staff, I've said this so many times sitting in this room, um, our staff still have um, roofs to put over their, over their heads and feed their children. They don't all do it from, we've all got the heart for community, but um, you know, there's the practical stuff as well. So it's really difficult out there and we're picking up, especially in Christchurch, you, you don't need to be told the need that is increased since the earthquakes. You all know very well. So I don't know, we need to find the money from somewhere, I guess, to start supporting us a bit more to doing this grassroots stuff with your people that pay your rates every day. Yeah, one of the things that really concerns us is the exponential growth in costs, um, for example, from rental through to uh, VCA and compliance issues. Um, they're through the roof for us. Health and safety costs are through the roof. Um, we do not have, have a health and safety officer. We do not have human resource management people. We do not generally have accountants. So all this has to flow down to somewhere, and that's usually us. Um, and that's, you know, we're here to tell you that it's not tenable. It's just not tenable. And so, yes, we are also trying to create our own income. Most of us do that quite significantly. Um, we're very grateful for the funding that we do get, and we do a lot with it. Um, if you have a look at the aid organisations that make up the North West Collective, it's largely a massive chunk of your city. Um, and we're not asking for massive increases. One of the things we did note was there was some discussion about making it inflation adjusted. We would highly endorse that, um, because in real terms, we're looking back over a very long period of time before there was any real increase in funding. If not, there's been years of decreased funding. And in real terms, it's been decreasing over that time because there's been no inflation adjustment. And one of the things that I was very proud of about being part of the city is that we had a council that was so supportive of community work. We do not want that to decrease. We think that that would be a real shame um, because yeah, we, we want to have that input, we want to have that connection to council because we with, with togetherness comes so much more. That's why eight organisations work together in the North West. Yeah. And we are all working together. And I mean, just today we've moved one of our projects that we started in Northcote has now moved to Te Ora Ho because they were able to access some external funding to, um, to keep that project going. Because So we know how to work together and lots of our groups in the city know how to to work collaboratively and so everybody here needs to work that way too I think sometimes but um, I guess that's really you know we don't have a lot to say because I think you all know how we are all working out there you, you work closely with your communities every day so so yeah, and yeah. any any chance that you can have regarding discussions around long-term funding is we we want to endorse that yeah. we also want to endorse actually having really set procedures so they're not changing year to year so we're not having this flex one of my major funders changed their funding date that cost us ten thousand dollars that we will never recoup and it meant that we actually had to downsize so that's just one organization it has immediate consequences and immediate flow on effects and we're being asked to do more and more if you look at the rhetoric coming from government Every second line is community groups, NGOs, community groups. Well, who's going to be these miraculous NGOs and community groups at the end of the pile? We're doing a lot, and we want to do a lot. We want to do more, and we want to do it really well. However, we need a partnership, and a partnership to me really is a partnership, not in words but in action. Um, there's a great quote that says, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, what is it? I can't. Your actions speak so loud I can't hear what you're saying. 
think this is something that we, you know, we can all agree upon, that we can say one thing and be another. And we're asking you to, to stand with us and partner with us and be partners in the truest sense of the word. Thank you. Um, Sarah, then Phil. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we are aware that there was originally a proposal to um, increase community funding by 10% and then inflation adjust it to, to do a bit of a catch up from previous years where it hasn't gone up. I was, I did read about the inflation adjustment, but I also saw that there was also a proposal to decrease it by 2%. Yeah, they're, they're currently it decreases over the 10 years, yeah. Um, but also, the, while Council is able to give some funding and other organisations do as well, and that covers <coughs> some staffing and all of your other operational costs, um, what, what is the number of sort of volunteer hours that your organisations are able to um, generate from that small amount of funding? that goes into, as a direct benefit into the communities? It's, I mean, you're talking eight different organisations. We would have anywhere from 25 to 50 volunteers in our organisation alone, some of them giving up horrendous hours. So our volunteer effort's huge. I mean, I document it. It's on every budget that I send out to every funder. So do all my mm. colleagues. Um, so, you know, I can't give you a figure for all eight combined, um, but I can tell you it's substantial. I think ours is loans in the 4,000 plus hours every year. So Could if you there be more combination, you know, more combining of your efforts so that, you know, you've got one health and safety plan, you've got one, you know, like, could you could you come together and actually reduce some of your compliance costs? So that is how we, we really started working as a group. So we share all our policies. We had, we combined all our policies, paid one person to write policies for the eight organisations. We do this really well. We know how to do that. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. yeah, because we know that's how we have to do it. And, and these are all MSD these are all church based church based organisations. No, no, no. Yes. but no. some of them are, and some, some, some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. yeah, and does the churches help out with some of the yep. admin yep. as well? I don't know if we can stretch much further with. Yeah. Yeah. So you have volunteers, how do you manage those volunteers? How do you yeah. train them in health and safety? How do you, you know, and which is quite complex now. So how do we do that? You know, those, those are all things that we have to negotiate with the same money. And so the likelihood is if, if, you, if your funding isn't able to keep up with the costs that you've got, that actually you're not going to be able to take advantage of the volunteer hours that are available in the community. Correct. Or you just, you just don't. And, and it's not one thing that's Program. exponentially increasing. You look at rentals from the time of the earthquake, well, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Vulnerable Children's Act, that's money we had, we had to find from somewhere. Um, health and safety, that just it seems to be a never-ending pit. Every time we have the fire compliance guys around, they've got something else that they want to throw at us. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to fight it, but every time we create more money to pay for that, it, there's more. And it just it, it, it's, what we're saying is that if we have an exponentially increasing cost, it's just like any business. Hmm. Somewhere along the line, it's going, to, it's going to become untenable. And we've had a number of managers in our area have heart attacks or breakdowns. So I'm concerned. I'm really concerned as a manager myself and the amount of risk that we take on board. Hmm. I'm concerned. I'm really, so we're coming to you saying, we're concerned. We think this is something you should listen to. Yeah. I mean, I've been around for 30 years doing different things in the city. Uh, so this is the second time I've come here. The first time was again around not increasing and it was before the earthquakes. Yeah. Um, but we have had a significant increase. We've, put, we've got government to contribute a million dollars a year for three years uh, to the um, uh, Community Wellbeing and Resilience Fund, which a number of the groups that have already <coughs> spoken at the moment have funding in. So, I mean, this may be some, one of the ones that we need to revisit. Uh, Phil? Thanks for your submission. Um, one of the things you mentioned in your written submission is about the mental health issues and that they have increased. I just wonder if you might make any comments about the, uh, in relation to how the groups who you coordinate, how they manage that. So just prior to this, I was meeting with a counselling service and we're looking at doing a combined proposal around youth centres and counselling in youth centres. Um, how tenable it is, it's looking pretty untenable. Uh, we have three councillors using our centre. Most of the other groups have councillors connected. Um, we work in about oh, 17 different schools, three of them quite weekly. Um, so we see it, we understand it. Uh, and we're certainly seeing, it's, there's still that impact with our children. 
and with our young children in the primary schools, that's still an ongoing and will be for some mm. time. So um, it's not going away. So some, some of your groups have an outreach into the schools. Mm. Thank you. I think almost all of ours. Mm. Yep. So we've got a couple of groups that specialise in elderly. They don't. <laughs> um, but we'd like to work with them because I think there's a lot of wisdom that elderly could bring to young people. No, that's, that's true. And I mean, there's some wonderful examples of how those connections can be made and helps young people, helps older people at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Look, thank you very much for your um, effort in coming today and uh, certainly some uh, food for thought for all of us. Thank you. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, Delta Community Support Trust.